it is with great excitement and a heavy heart that I bid you welcome one final time to Dark Souls. Yes, this is the episode in which we will conclude our long journey here together in the Dark Souls universe. We've got a lot to accomplish though, so fear not, this is going to be a good one. There's a lot of quests that uh, require our attention, and we are going to ensure that uh, even though this may be our last episode, we will leave with no regrets of tasks left unaccomplished. Uh, first and foremost, we need to go back to Firelink. Having uh, beaten Slave Knight Gale, a very worthy opponent uh, in an incredibly enjoyable fight, we need to reap the rewards of our victory and exchange these hard-earned souls uh, for something a little more tangible in the form of levels. So let's see what we're going to get here. We're going to grab... Uh, one level intelligence here. We may actually get to 20 intelligence this playthrough. Look at that. Very neat. So we need another 13,000 souls uh, from our good friend, the Shrine Handmaiden here. And there we are. 20 intelligence. Now, one thing that I've uh, realized that I've neglected to do is is level up this uh, staff. Uh, I know it's it just it's just sort of a uh, an afterthought. It feels like in many cases, but I would like to get this sorcerer's staff to a slightly higher level. So why don't we go ahead and use some of our souls here? Uh, just give us a little bit of currency to work with, and maybe get it to a. Uh, a slightly more robust level. Let's do one of our weary warrior souls. That should be plenty, uh, I would think. So here we go, sorcerer's staff. Let's see how far we can get it. Large titanite shard. Plus eight. Plus nine. I, I think we're going to hold off on the Titanite Slab. We do have seven of them, but I don't know. There's just there's just part of me that can't bring myself to do it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just like, there's got to be a better weapon out there for me to use it on. Okay. So, back to Slave Knight Gale's bonfire. And um, I would like to take a, a further look at the ruins that he was protecting. Not expecting many uh, enemies at this point. So possibly up this uh, this hill is the only direction that I can I can really surmise from what we we see here. This is truly the end of days. And it's almost a little uh, off-putting how enemy-free it is. You know, there's there's nobody here to waylay us, nobody to jump out at us and give us. Um, well, maybe we come down here. Okay. Nobody to jump out at us and and give us issues. It's just us and the sands. Um, I'm sure there must be something up there, right? Is this the proper direction? Okay. Maybe there's nothing over here. Maybe... Maybe it's a, an indication we need to look elsewhere. So... If not in this ruin, then perhaps on the next uh, dune over, there may be something of interest. Interesting that we find bloodstains even way out here. Put 
perhaps this direction is where we need to head now. Yeah, this looks correct. We're in a uh, church, a uh, temple of some I kind. Searched for thee. Oh. Dark, stricken creature. I am oh. Shira, daughter of the Duke, descendant of gods, and trusted friend to Medea. At once, I am the honor of the gods, the glory of fire, and the fear of the world. Thou shalt not go unpunished. For thy treachery, thy profanity, oh. and thy shameless yearning. Hang on. So she is out for some revenge. Because she was the caretaker of uh, Princess Philinor, right? Let's stay healthy. He is no slouch, that's for sure. Good for you. Oh no. Okay. Hang on. Oh wow, that tracking is pretty incredible. Try to corner her as much as possible. Oh no. Alright, fair enough. Alright, we're getting a little bit of a stun uh, stagger effect there. No. Wow. Okay. She's got some very healthy iframes there. Wow. <laughs> she has iframes almost equivalent to a player, it feels like. Oh, she's out of uh, Estus, finally. Okay, we got her on the run now. Uh-oh. Maybe she's got us on the run. Come on. Oh no, come on. Hmm. Crucifix of the Mad King. Let's take a look at that. Um, is that a... I, that must be a uh, sorcerer's or staff or a, or, a mirror or a chime of some kind, perhaps? Let's see. The sacred chime of Philinor, that's what she gave to us before. And so somehow her, her, tr her rage had just kept her alive all these years. Crucifix of the Mad King. A cross spear hung with a malformed corpse. Once a Mad King was born to the Pygmy royalty, and Shira, Knight of Philinor, put him to rest. But Shira's cross spear, unable to kill the undying king, only pinned itself to him. Shira delivered them together to a dark room, where she stayed and held them close. The Mad King's folly. Slam malformed corpse into the ground to briefly awaken it, then fill it, fill it with strong attack to trigger a roar, a blessing, or vexation. That is incredibly metal. To have a sword made of a shriveled, desiccated corpse of a, a former king. A mad king was born to the pygmy royalty. I wonder who that is implied to be. I mean, see the scaleless is notoriously mad. Silence. I suspect that may be it, though. No soup ahead. That's sad. 
we'll, we'll take a look uh, outside the courtyard, but that may be our final uh, encounter. Yeah, looks like it. So here's the plan. Let's go ahead and use our coiled sword fragment. Let's go back to the last bonfire. I do want to circle back uh, briefly to an earlier point. I'm going to go check in with the hag. Uh, the hag who we had um, conversed with upon our first arrival to the drag heap. Um, she, you know, returning to talk to NPCs that we've met along the way seems to be the way that these DLCs want us to conduct our business. This correct? Oh no, this is this is not the right one. The drag heap, that's the one. And uh, since this apparently it takes place at a different point in time, she may or may not know what we have just done in terms of disturbing the princess and ending Slave Night Gale. But then again, maybe she... Oh, she's, uh... Apparently our killing of... Our killing, uh... Ended her as well. The old woman's ashes. Okay. Well. I suppose we should go... Where, where to now? I guess back to Firelink. We'll read the ashes. See what kind of... Uh, indications we can get of the the identity of the hag before we turn it in. I, I do want to kind of look at it quickly. Old woman's ashes. Shrine handmade prepares new items. Umbral ash of the stone humped woman. Things that have dreadfully run their course accrue at the great dreg heap. This old woman was once the wet nurse of royalty. I see. So she probably attended to uh, Princess Philinor in her youth. And of course, with Princess Philinor being um, summarily dealt with by ourselves, the old woman probably could not bear to live any longer. How, how many... Pretty tragic. Gracious and almost as if oh. it lived mere moments ago. Awfully warm. Oh, forgive an old woman's idle prate. I'm sure an Ashen One such as thee would never indulge such base contrivances. <laughs> no, I'm sure it was not my fault at all. <laughs> not at all. Let's see if we can identify any new armor. Attire of the Knight from Sunless Realms. Oh, this is Cirrus's armor, is it not? S yeah, Sunless Knights serve this name serve the Nameless Moon, and perhaps it is for this reason that Attire casts a feminine silhouette. Metal uh, resistance both magic and the dark is what we see here. Alright, any any new armor here for us to read about? Not seeing anything here. However, we do have a new soul. We do have a new soul, and that is Soul of Dark Eater, Medir, Soul of Slave Knight Gale. Yeah. The red-hooded, wandering Slave Knight Gale sought the blood of the, of the Dark Soul as pigment for the painted world, but Gale knew he was no champion, that the Dark Soul would likely ruin him, and that he had little hope of a safe return. Truly a Sisyphean task. One that was thankless, but uh, I suppose that implies that he is very much a hero. You know, trying to bring some sort of resolution to the broken world, but unable to summon the strength within him to, to, to see it done. But we can appreciate his effort for sure. So, 
Here is the plan from here. Um, ordinarily, I would I, th there would be more continuity to the episode. We would kind of go together from place to place. But I want to do something a little different for our for our final episode. I would like to do this in a series of vignettes. And here's what I mean. There are a number of NPCs that we've met along their way. Some of their quests have been clear and obvious. Some, much less so. Uh, I certainly would not be able to finish all of them without the help of, uh, well, yourselves, the, the, the viewers and the other good members of the Dark Souls community. So some of them, uh, some of you have helpfully put it in comments, uh, and I intend to kind of go from place to place, see what we can do to finish out these quests. This is a sort of a departure from not what I normally do. I like to go as blind as possible, but in this particular instance, I, I don't see how I could puzzle it out all on my own. So I'm going to know generally for whose quest line I am seeking to close when I go to a place, uh, but I have, I have done my best to not know exactly what it is that I will find. So I will have a general NPC uh, that, I'm, that I will be looking for. I'll know where to go, but hopefully not know exactly what what there will be to find so we can experience that together so with that being said we'll just sort of go in a, in a in a sequence of vignettes from place to place this will be the conclusion of the story of lap not too far at all our our first vignette we go to pursue the storyline the resolution of the amnesiac known as lap and we will have to follow him to a few consecutive bonfires to find out the resolution of his story oh Look at you. You found the treasure. Dashing. Just dashing. You'll make good use of it, I'm sure. Now, this is a little toast from me to you. Interesting. Is that a is that a hint? Is this Siegbird uh, somehow come back to to tend to our needs? He doesn't sound nearly jovial enough to be Siegbird, Not much though. To speak of. But, uh, bottoms up, to the greatest warrior there oh, is. Oh, no. He he acknowledges Siegbird's uh, absence. This really is a dreg heap at the world's end. Mangled remnants from every age and every land. It actually sort of lends credence to the old rumors. That the ringed city rests below it all. Brother, way ahead of you. The, the rumors are true. This really is a dreg mangled... It actually... Okay, so from here, we need to go to the ringed inner wall. And here's our friend out here, gazing upon the vista. Oh, well fancy meeting you here. A true blessing that we should seek the same place and find ourselves standing here together. I've got the last of my brew. Let's have our own little toast with it. Another Ziegbrow. Very nice. To my search and to your duty. And to the joy that lies before us. All right, then. Bottoms up. <laughs> Vicky appreciates that. Now, I'm off in search of the purging monument. Once I find it, everything will come back to me. Who I was, what I lived for, what my name was, and what terrible grudges I held. I don't know. I just have this feeling that that's the kind of man I was. Oh, don't hold it against me. I only think I was. <laughs> Brother, I am not one to judge. Believe me. I've been places and done things that you wouldn't believe. Now, all right. To the purging monument, it is. Here we are, deep in the bowels of the Ringed City. Here in the swamp area, which I am eager to forget, as I'm sure many of you are as well. Wow. Covetous Gold Serpent Rink 3. Let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. Fallen foes more likely to drop items. That is nice. You know what? I think I've never used this, though. I'm sure it's very useful to those who are in covenants, right? Who are looking for a particular... Um, uh, an item to drop that they need to farm, what have you. Like a like a sword grass or a, or a 
or an ear or a tongue or whatever crazy body parts you need for your weird cult. <laughs> anyway, let's talk to our good friend Lap. Oh, and here we are again. How goes things? I'm rather running in circles, I'm afraid. I can't find the purging monument, and I've searched high and low. What if it was never here in the first place? Oh, bloody hell. What do I know? Sorry. I know it doesn't concern you. Seeing you all good and well, I... I just sort of spilled my guts to you. I mean, just it's my pleasure. Like a good hollow wood. <laughs> yeah. No way, man. I'm gonna find this mythical purging stone, and I will come back and let you know once I have found it. Well, as we search for the purging monument, the swamp will uh, sometimes reveal its secrets to us. One of those being a bonfire. Man, wouldn't that have been super nice earlier? <laughs> but um, better, better late than never, I suppose. And off we go. Uh, there's a gate which I would very much like to uncover. Oh, uh, maybe not that way. This, is this a direction? No, this is not a direction we want to go in. Okay. Maybe we'll pick this up on our way. Alright, large soul, I'll take it. Titanite chunk. I don't know what's going on there, but I don't like it. We gotta get up on the onto that uh, that rock right there. That's the idea, All right? So we need to run. Oh no, that's not good. We need to run over here, drop down, so that we're on top of here. We still gotta get inside that building somehow. That guy's after me. That's where we came from. Oh, just right here. Yeah. So easy. And now we should have the opportunity to open this up. And why don't we <laughs> quickly rest here? Very good. And now we can sort of check out this area at our at our leisure. Uh, well, first of all, what do we have here? This is like another little path up here. Have we been here before? I mean, that's that's where the that's where the dragon was. Okay, this little up outcropping up here, we don't really need anything from. Mimicry required ahead, therefore try swamp. Read message. We're reading graving. Show your humanity. So mimicry required ahead. Therefore try swamp. I so here's the thing. I know that we have some items which allow us to change form. We've never used one though, but I, I know that we have them. Uh the branches, right? Yeah, young white branches. Transform blending into environment. Little Dusk's first sorcerer's staff eventually became a seedling and then three white birch saplings. The young branch is said to still contain echoes of Little Dusk's capriciousness. Blend into the environment. Show your humanity. Mimicry required ahead. Try swamp. He's pointing in this direction, which I feel is deliberate. Now it says transform into, like, the the item says, um, blend into your environment. And it's saying try swamp. So do I need to be standing in a swamp and then use one of these? Like maybe we should equip, uh, equip this to our inventory, if that's the case. Remove that. Uh, 
throw that on there. Maybe I'll try killing this guy real quick. If I can. Uh-oh. Alright, that's a start. And I'll take that. Thank you very much. So try swamp, huh? I'm I'm standing in the swamp right now. It doesn't feel correct. Oh no, rolling removes it. Oh. I remember this. This is from uh, Dark Souls 1, right? The humanity sort of uh, symbol. Because when we went down to fight Manus, this is what everybody looked like down there. I, there is no way I could have gotten that without that message. Also, good we had a couple of these branches because that seems rough. Okay. So show my humanity. So how, how in the world would you know that being in a swamp would change you into a humanity ghost? Like there's no, there's no way I could have figured that out <laughs> just on my own. Just trial and error, I guess. Well, thank you to everybody who did the work before me. So a purging monument. So is that like, um, I forget what his name was. It was like Oswald, the uh, the partner from Dark Souls 1, right? Where he, where he would stand in the, the cathedral of the Bell Gargoyles and forgive you for accidentally um, injuring NPCs. That was, that was his general thing. But I also felt like we had one of these already. Uh, we found a statue of Velka, Goddess of Sin. Um, did we not? Down in the sewers. Around the undead settlement. So I'm not sure what, ex what, what, uh, function this exactly is accomplishing for us. Whoa! Uh, okay. Oh, we got another one of these things, huh? Oh, no! He's got the archers again. I thought it was going to be different this time. Oh, no, and a ringed knight. Oh, no. This is bad. Well, maybe I could just sit back here. Oh, I cannot sit back here. I can't... Oh, no. And Lido as well. Okay, this feels bad. Oh, no. Come on, heal. Heal again. Oh, there's two of them? And there's Leto. Uh, hang on. My heal. Alright, let's go around. There's no way. There's no way. Okay, one of them down. That's good. I'll damage him a little bit more. Okay, he's down. He's down. So there's just one more guy left, right? Yep. My camera got messed up. in there.
Good range on that. Alright, get in there. Oh no. The double slam. Oh no! Okay, come on. God damn it. Let's get let's back up. We're we're flailing a little bit. Damn it. Oh man, that was so close. You know what I'm gonna do? This might seem like a waste, I don't care. Oh, I want I want to ember. Why can't oh I'm already embered. Um <laughs> Siegbrow. We just got one of those. Cheers. Yeah. I think I think that's what Siegward would have wanted. He would have wanted us to survive this and uh, carry on his legacy. Is it necessary? Probably not, but if there are further surprises here, I don't want to be have this be all for naught, you know? So what was what was this all for? A purging monument. Is that, oh is that What am I looking for? Oh, is that what this is? Is this a purging monument? No? Okay, I'm I'm a little bit confused right now. And it's a bit off-putting that I hear things running around. Okay. Um. Purging monument. Purging monument. Are we sure, are we sure it's not this? Do I drop down there? Oh, that's the purging monument over there. Duh. Okay. So, yes. Oh, there's a ladder here. Got it. I totally missed that. That creepy black structure is almost certainly a purging monument, right? Alright, I'm tracking now. Uh-oh. Come on. Dragon Head Shield. Large Soul of Crestfallen Knight. Always nice to see. And then what do we have here? Pray to the Purging Monument. Sure. Absolution, Dissolution, Reinstate the King's Decree. I have not sinned. That's good. Dissolution, I don't know what that means. King's Decree, I don't know what that means either. But probably we'll just leave well enough alone. Anything back here? No, I think we're good. So, I guess now we use Coiled Sword Fragment. Go back to the last bonfire. And then from there, we will go ahead and head back and inform Lap of our discovery. And then I'm not sure if he'll meet us there. I suppose we will, so we may have to go through that once again. Or if not go through that, at least we'll have to run through it. And uh, that will be the plan. We have returned to give the good news. I had to kill somebody 
to be able to get back to give said good news, but uh, all is not lost. I'm sure he'll be happy to know what we have found. What did I come here in search of? Damn. Stop it. I'm unbreakable. Unbreakable. Speak of the purging monument, of course. Are you certain of that? No. S sorry, I, I know you'd never lie to me. Thank you. Thank you kindly. I'll speed right on over. It won't be long now before I know everything. Who I was, what I lived for, and what my name was. And I'll have you to thank for it all. Ah, I swear upon my birth name that I am your friend. No matter what might come out, no matter what I was, if you would do me the honor, allow me to be a true friend. Always. Of course. I mean, there's not many true friends left here at the end of the world, so I say we stuck together. We've only got each other, right? It won't be long who I was. And I... All right. So uh, from that, let's meet him over at the Purging Monument. Well, our friend Lap was not at the Purging Monument, but uh, Intel suggests that he may be found somewhere here in the Shared Grave. That looks like him over there, doesn't it? like that, so we're going to take our shortcut. And... Uh oh. Uh, I don't know how we get over there now. Oh, whoa. Is this correct? Yeah. All right. And I got to jump over this, right? Looking a little worth worse for wear, but he does have the deep squat going on, which I appreciate. Is he turning into like an outrider knight? Oh, finally. You've come. Now I know exactly who I was. And for that, I have a little thanks to be giving. Go this way and peep past the broken staircase. Some awfully fine treasures just sitting there all alone. <laughs> It'll change your uh -huh. life. Really? I've much to thank. Go this way and peep past the broken staircase. Some awfully fine treasures just sitting there. What? Don't you believe me? No, I don't. But... Of course, we're going to get suckered into this thing, but you know what? It's worth it. Every age, it seems, is tainted by the greed of men. Rubbish to one such as I. Devoid of all... Hatches. I knew it. Check the tapes. Check the tapes. The first time I talked to this guy was like last episode of the episode before. I said he seemed like Patches. Didn't I say that? Maybe it's just the way we are. I'll stick you in my prayers. A fine dark soul to you. Great. A fine dark souls three to you. <laughs> well, is is there actually anything down here worth uh Worth nabbing? Not, not really, I guess. Well, now what? Uh, do we just go back and do we continue to chase him? <laughs> Is this the ne the never ending the never ending uh chase of us versus patches? Sure is what it feels like. Unless he's in here, no. Oh, we gotta get over there. Okay, hang on. Alright, how do I get up there? Uh. 
Wait, that's just where I was. I just came full circle. Alright, here's what we do. Coiled uh, sword fragment. We go to the previous bonfire, which was the one here. I'm pretty sure we'll be on the proper level to pick up whatever it is that was dropped there right next to the... Uh, right there. Oh no! Great. Just great. Now I gotta get down here. This should break, right? There we go. And then we go back. Here we are. What did you leave me? Laps, helm, armor, gauntlets, and leggings. Beautiful. A satisfying conclusion <laughs> to a very Patches episode. For our next chapter, we are going to pursue the story of Leonard. Now, Leonard uh, was leaning against a throne in Firelink Shrine and indicated to us that there was something of interest to us that we could find here on the High Wall of Lothric. It's been quite some time since we've been here. <laughs> Not since the very early episodes of uh, the, the playthrough have we been here. But he said there was some sort of spirit or, or demon or I can't quite recall what exactly it was that we were meant to find here. Try fleeing, huh? We'll see about that. Are we alone? I think we are. Oh, I remember these guys from a uh, new, new Londor ruins, right? Okay, now what? Is that it? Illusion ahead? Is there? It does kind of look like an illusion. Okay. Well, we got a cracked, cracked red eye orb. So that is used for what? That is used for invasions, right? Is there invade other? Oh yeah, consume to invade another world. Okay. Well, I suppose that's that. Prisoner has been dealt with. I'm sure Leonard will be pleased. So. Perhaps we will get our next direction from him. Aha, you found a proper red eye. Brilliant. I knew you were no ordinary man. Oh, a gesture. A great. Sarcastic applause or genuine applause? I guess it depends on the context, huh? Now invade and pillage all you like. And if you grow weary of your duty, you too may become a finger. Come on. Give yourself to Rosaria of the Cathedral of the Deep. <laughs> Give ourselves to now Rosaria. And come on. <laughs> well, I know where she is. Actually, she is actually probably one of my more frequently traveled to bonfires. Because if I'm ever a few hundred souls short of something, <laughs> I usually go to her antechamber and kill her worm servants. So, why don't we... Head on over there. We're supposed to offer ourselves to her. Now, I'm assuming that we have, we even have an item to offer to her. I'm not sure. I suppose we would, right? Because we usually get one or two covenant items for free. Very weird and off-putting, but okay. Going Covenant, I suppose. Okay. Discovered Rosaria's Fingers Covenant. I have obtained proof of the Covenant. And I have a Pale Tongue to offer. Sure. Why not? 
So now I suppose we go back. So it said reallocate attributes and alter appearance. So if we wanted to respec into something, I suppose this would be the way to do it. And uh, there he is. Not surprising at all. All right. What are, what are my next orders? Ah. So you've chosen to serve Rosaria after all. She will be pleased with me for finding her another finger. <laughs> but be warned, my friend. Rosaria's fingers need only fetch tongues for their mistress. Otherwise, we are free. Unchained. Like Yellowfinger, you can choose to believe that all fingers share camaraderie. But do not force your romance upon the rest of us. <laughs> You're saying you don't want me to fight. You don't, you don't want me to fight you, but I will. Rosaria's thing, otherwise you are free, but do not. <laughs> I will fight you. If that's what it comes down to. Okay, so... Back to Firelink. Never mind. Apparently this is exactly where I'm meant to be. So... Uh... I need to make time pass. Now, th this is the strange thing about following these quest lines after the fact. And doing it literally by the book. Is, how, how would I know that I, need, I would need to come back here after a certain point in my journey? That, I don't know. But we're returning. She has perished. And now we have this black eye orb. Let's go ahead and read on that, now that we... Now that we have it. Invade the world of Rosaria's killer. Arcane orb left on Rosaria's corpse. Have faith her soul can be retrieved by invading the world of her killer and returning victorious. The black eye is proof of vengeance, but often appears serene as it cases its gaze towards Irithyll. And so from here, apparently... We need to travel to, uh, well, now that I think of it, an area that is act we're actually very much familiar with invading. If you recall, in Dark Souls 1, the, uh, the firekeeper who was murdered, that individual, um, that individual came here to Anne Orlando. Now, it was, it was down there, I believe, that the fight actually occurred. But apparently, this is where we need to be for the, uh, the next invasion. A proud and Orlando tradition, I suppose. Black Eye Orb Quivering. Let's do it. And I suspect I know... Who will be on the other end? Well, well, never expected to see you here. Couldn't resist her any longer in all her festering glory. And now you want to ravage her soul as well. Don't want to ravage her soul. I sow the seeds, I'll prune the mess. Do you appear in the I, in the chamber? Leonard, swear yes, he is. On my vows to the oh, okay. Oh, nicely done. Okay, hang on. So we only have we don't have as many uh Estuses, do we? Oh, we don't need them. The duty has been fulfilled. Now, Rosaria didn't necessarily seem like a like a good individual. I don't know. I guess I shouldn't judge based on appearances, right? I'm just naturally suspicious of worm ladies, that's all. Soul of Rosaria, Crescent Moon Sword, and a silver mask. Let's take a look at the, the uh, soul. The soul of Rosaria, mother of rebirth, stolen by Ringfinger Leonard. 
Return this to her extant corpse, and Mother Rosaria will spring back to life. As if nothing had ever happened. Or, hear me out. Is it possible to turn this into Ludleth for some kind of interesting item? I say we go check it. Because if there's one thing that I love, it's a potent it's the potential for a cool item. And I think that's what's important. Ah, so. Let's see here. Soul of Rosaria. Bountiful sunlight. Gradually restore high HP for self and broad area. Special miracle granted by the Princess of Sunlight. The miracles of Guinevere, loved as both mother and wife, bestow their blessing on a great many warriors. So... Interesting. We've got, we've got two indications here. Maidens of the Princess of Sunlight... Does that mean Rosaria was a special companion of Guinevere? So maybe she was like her right-hand lady and this was like a super um, powerful healing miracle that Guinevere granted to her as like her chosen uh, bosom companion, if you will. Oh, and here's, here's something else we should look at. Soul of Slave Knight Gale, Gale's greatsword. The only weapon that he kept with him from beginning to end. Originally an executioner's sword made for de decapitation, this blade is heavily chipped and stained with the blood of countless battles. Blade of Peril, a precarious technique unique to Undead Gale. Leap in any direction, slamming the great sword to the ground, then follow with normal attack for a large spinning slash or strong attack to backstep and jump forward in overhead slam. A powerful finishing move worthy of one of the most... Uh, Skillful opponents that we faced. I took the mantle, choose all the more. And thus ends the tale of Leonard. Our next chapter will hopefully be a happier one. This is the tale of Irina of Kareem. Now, having given her one tome for which to learn the miracles of, uh, we are now on the hunt for a rumored second tome to be found somewhere in this vicinity. Now, where, if I were a tome, would I be hiding? Man, it feels like not too long ago that we were struggling against these creatures. This is the general vicinity in which we are meant to be looking. Oh, that that seems like a very tricky hiding spot. Now, how exactly would I get there, I wonder? Is there a way to drop down without facing certain doom? does seem like there's a path here. Oh, dogs. Why did it have to be dogs? There's a few things here. Morin's ring. You'll for sure want to look at that. The Braille Divine Tome of Kareem. Now, I'm not sure if we've even explored this particular area before, so it probably bears looking at. This little promontory does not reveal anything else of interest. We'll take a look on this side now. Oh, I, I vaguely remember this drop down from before. But okay, so from here. Our goal is to give this to the Lady Arena. And also to uh, hope, we'll hopefully have enough money to purchase most of the, uh, the miracles that she will now be able to sell. Oh, Champion of Ash. Welcome back. Do you wish to hear a tale? I do. 
Oh, you've brought me a braille divine tome. Now I can tell new tales of miracles. Tales of the greater miracles can be quite the epics. What fun we will have. <laughs> and what money you will make, presumably. Purchase item. Well, there's only one thing I can buy right now. Have a pleasant journey. I pray for your safety. Well, thank you. Uh, I wonder... Oh, champion. There's nothing else I can purchase, so do I need a, do I need to allow her time to replenish her supplies, or where's that it? We'll we'll check back in with her um, after we complete another little uh, another little let's call it a field trip. So back to the very cage in which she was kept for so long. And here we are, outside the Lady Irina's former quarters, humble they, though they may be. No sign of the good Sir Egon of Kareem. But perhaps, uh, this could be a sighting of him right here, unfortunately. Morn's great hammer and moaning shield. Let's take a look at that. That bears that bears investigation. Great hammer bestowed upon Kareem knights with with demonstrate who demonstrate outstanding strength and unwavering faith. Decorated by a warding charm of Kareem Temple and imbued with the twisted rage of Apostle Morn. Morn's Rage. Stick weapon into the earth and emit a powerful shockwave. Also, similar to Perseverance, temporarily boosts poise and reduces damage received. And then we also received a... Shield. Um, I've already forgotten what it was called. Here it was. Moaning Shield. A deformed great shield given to Egon of Kareem upon being confirmed knighthood. The giant woman's face that protects Egon is that of his sister, some four years his senior. <laughs> Skill, moan, awful a gentle prayer to the shield, causing the woman's face to give out a low moan and attract <laughs> enemies. Well, I'm sure that is all that it's going to attract, right? We're back here with Irina, uh, possibly to inform her of the fate of her friend and guardian. I hope she won't take oh, it too badly. You wish to hear it? You know, in my, I would Actually, she doesn't seem to reason. want to to talk about that. Huh. There's no way to, to let her know of the of the of the fate of Egon. So, uh, learning miracles, we we may need to dip into our cash reserves. Stock fully de Oh, we need to buy this healing one, a force one, and then we need to buy one more. Intended to grant the dying a few moments for a uh, final farewell. Tears are shed for the sake of the living, more so than the deceased. So we need 10,000. We've got 8,400. So we should have enough uh, with a simple one of these. Oh, did you... And I believe that's everything. You know, in my eye with it, but if I... Oh, terribly sorry. Thank you, Everson. May your solemn duty conclude in triumph. Well, thank you. Now, I've purchased oh, everything Jeff, from her. And usually that, remain, that means that something thank different you, will happen. May your... I don't believe she said, may your solemn duty conclude in triumph before, did she? So perhaps we'll check in on her uh, a bit later. And now, on to our next chapter. This is the story of Grey Rat, a rogue of exceptional skill, of even temper, of a jolly disposition, who was sent out by me. I, I do bear some trepidation as to his fate. Uh, sent out by me to gather supplies. Uh... 
for the purposes of bringing about uh, the darkness. Did he know what he was signing up for? Not sure. But also, uh, perhaps he was happy just to be uh, doing what he loved once again. And perhaps giving people meaning is the ultimate uh, is the ultimate service that I could do him in the end. And there he lies, unfortunately, as I as I feared. Grey Rat's ashes. He came so far, but was unable to uh, ultimately uh, carry off the heist, which I know he was so capable of. But perhaps he he finds some solace in this rest. Umbral Ash of Grey Rat of the Undead Settlement. Grey Rat was a thief who fancied himself a martyr for the poor which is what drove him to climb the wall. A good man, a good friend, he will be sorely missed. This is the story of Siegvard, one of the greatest fighters the world has ever seen. Through time and space, his deeds and exploits are the stuff of legends. And uh, I am somewhat trepidatious being sent back here to the location of his final and perhaps greatest achievement the reckoning against his former uh, friend and companion, the giant Yorm. And considering the trend of all the people that I seem to have come in contact with before, I fear I know what I will find in this spot. The storm ruler and a pierce shield, as well as his armor. So I suppose the implication is that once he completed his final um, task, here, he became fulfilled and so no longer had a need to cling to this mortal plane, which is perhaps better than him going hollow in some respect. So as much as I would have liked to have seen him uh, carry through uh, to persevere to the end of times, perhaps wherever he is, he is now in a better place. To that end, we drink a Siegbrow in his honor. Wherever you are, Siegvard, I hope you rest easy. This is the story of Orbeck of Vinheim. A true gentleman and scholar, Orbeck's sorceries rivaled perhaps only those of Big Hat Logan himself, aided in great part, of course, by the Ashen One, providing him with many interesting tomes for him to learn, uh, and then sell to the Ashen One. Having developed a great friendship and having expended his total inventory of sorceries, Orbeck returned to the Grand Archives, where he sought even greater and deeper knowledge. However, knowledge can only protect you so far in a world so full of death and destruction. And perhaps Orbeck's love for knowledge lent him a, uh, an untimely demise. As here he rests. Rest well, dear Orbeck. And thus we have collected his ashes and will inter them with honor. This is the story of, well, I suppose the Ashen One and the Ashen One's unknown adversary. However, at the moment it appears to be Gwyn, uh, who is mugging us right at this particular moment. Now, we've came here before. The Ashen One mind you, is not always the smartest in every situation. Um, and tried opening up a secret passage by running on these uh, protrusions, not realizing, of course, that sometimes the best way to get to the next level is just to roll with it. I don't know why that I couldn't have done that the first time. <laughs> but here we are. A whole nother area I just completely missed. But better late than never, right? Brass helm, armor, gauntlets, and leggings. Let's... I still have no idea whose trail we're following right now. 
armor of a knight once known as the Dark Moon. It is said that this brass armor hides something hideous within. Something about its silhouette suggests femininity. Oh, was that, um... What's her name? Something of Astera. Henri? Henri of Astera? Uh, she of... Henri and Horus? Is that what's happened here? Now, why would she be here in particular? Sadness. Henri straight sword, yeah. Now, this looks like a ritual murder, doesn't it? Chest ahead. Oh, there is a chest ahead. I thought that was in jest. A reversal ring. I've got questions. Why is she dead? Who killed her? Um, I suppose that has something to do with the the Dark Moon, right? The, the Sable Church, is that right? That's awfully sad. Let's look, take a look at the, at the couple rings that we've picked up here. We've got Morn's Ring, Boosts Miracles, Malformed Ring given to the Knights of Kareem. Morn served the goddess Katha and later became an apostle of the Archbishop. They labored together to provide comfort to the suffering. A reversal ring. Now what does that mean? A divine ring granted to the Dark Moon Gwendolyn in his youth causes males to perform female actions and vice versa. Gwendolyn was raised like a daughter through the aura of the moon and was said to behave like a sullen brooding goddess. What does a female action mean? Males can perform female actions and vice versa? As in like, if you want to change your appearance? Very strange. Well, um, oh, let's also take a look at Henri's uh, straight sword as well. Sword precious to Henri, another unkindled. The dullest type of blade found in the ruined land of Astera. Only, it was once the sword of an earnestly noble figure, and its attacks are boosted by that elusive, essential property unique to humans. Luck. If only Henri's luck didn't run out. But, perhaps here in the light of the moon or the light of the sun, she'll be a bit happier wherever she is. This is the story of a painter in a cold, unfeeling, uncaring world, but perhaps who has sparked the hope of flame, and perhaps the Ashen One can deliver her some comfort in these trying times. The blood of the Dark Soul. Hang on. That's not something I knew that I had. Where do I have the blood of the Dark Soul? Um, and when did I get it? Blood of the Dark Soul. Pigments to depict a painted world. Blood of the Dark Soul that seeped from the hole within Slave Knight Gale. Oh, right. He made a comment about that uh, after his first phase, right? Used as pigment by his lady in Arendelle to depict a painted world. When Gale came upon the pygmy lords, he discovered that their blood had long ago dried and so consumed the Dark Soul. So I suppose his goal was to consume as much Dark Soul as possible, to turn his blood into a pigment to then give to the painter to create a new, fresh world, a world devoid of rot and the undead curse which has befallen Lothric, Londor, and Drangleic. Well, I don't see any good reason for us to hold on to this blood any longer, so let's give it to someone who can use it for a better purpose. My thanks, Ashen One. With this, will I paint a world? Please tell me thy name. I will name this painting after thee. Call it the Odyssey. Oh, share your name? Yeah. Call it Homer's the Odyssey. <laughs> My thanks. I will paint a world of that name. It will be a cold, dark, and very gentle place. And one day, it will 
Yeah, I also hope that. My thanks, Passion One. I will assuredly finish the painting of the cold, dark, and very gentle place one day. My thanks, good. One day. Well, I wish I could see the painting when it was done, but I'll trust that you'll make it something very memorable and worthy of my legacy. And thus we return to Firelink Shrine for what is perhaps the final time and one more chapter that is yet to be finished, that of Cirrus. Having brought her grandfather some measure of retribution, retribution, justice, and peace, perhaps she has found a new purpose, or rather a lack of purpose in her life. And who's to say what form that may have taken? A sunless talisman and a sunset shield. And there she lies, I suppose. I don't know if we have this undead to thank for it. Let us hope that's not actually her in some other awful form. But uh, there she lies, and um, we can only hope the fact that her grandfather is now um, is now fully passed on to the other side, then perhaps she is able to join him wherever he may be. Hope is a small thing, but perhaps it is the best thing that we have here in, uh, in this darkened world. But perhaps... There is one more thing to be hopeful for. Because if I'm not mistaken, this is our Lady of Miracles, Arena of Kareem, who has taken on a very different aspect indeed. Oh, sweet champion of Asha. Let souls be your strength. And Arena has taken on the powers of a firekeeper. She has shed the blindness, well perhaps she retains the blindness, but has shed the restriction that she felt upon herself to not perform the duties of a firekeeper. And here we are. So, of everybody, Hawkwood, Ziegbird, Grey Rat, Orbeck, Henri, um, patches to some extent. Very few got any measure of uh, any any sort of a happy ending when all is said and done. Which is not to say that it's an unfulfilling ending, but it is certainly a sad one. So who who exactly is left? I suppose the the uh, or the blacksmith is here. Carla never uh, she. I mean, she already went through. Quite a, a tragic time herself, what well, with being in, in the uh, Irithyll dungeon. The Shrine Handmaid, and then our uh, <laughs> our pyromancy friend over there. Didn't have much of a storyline, but he is living his best life over there. And I say, good for him. Let's go ahead and turn in the various ashes that we've collected during this time. Ah, well met, Ashen One. How? Let's give Grey Rat's ashes. Well, well, what warm, humble ash have we here? It's as if thy fate were with death entwined. But take no note of me. Thy business yeah. is thine own. Look, 
Shrine Handmaid, you're here to sell me stuff. That's right. Spare me the editorializing if you don't mind. I guess you're bored here. There's not much that you can do, so that's how you get your kicks. Making mean comments about my dead friends. Thank you. Well, well, what? It's as much techno as by now there is little. Well, let's see what we have here. Is there anything specifically that we could pick up in terms of armor uh, that's new? Sunless Veil, Sunless Gauntlet, Faram. See, nothing is really jumping out at me at the moment. Oh, this is something new. Oh, um, Leonard's Garb. Garb of Ringfinger Leonard. Leonard was born into royalty, which is believed to be the reason for his skill in both sorcery and swordsmanship. Indeed, this dingy garb is in fact embroidered with gold thread, betraying its purpose as military wear designed for a noble. Ah, and here we have the clandestine cloak, traditional coat of the Vinheim Dragon School. Normally a deep blue color, this black variation is a sign of a sorcerer engaged in surreptitious work. These were covert agents who excelled at manipulating sound. And I believe Ashen one. that is all. So with our business, by and large, concluded, let's take one final level. We have just enough in our oh. inventory to, uh, to sell, to get one more level. So we're going to sell this, we're going to sell that, and that'll get us to 69,000 souls. The perfect number of souls to have. We're going to grab one more level. We're going to throw it into intelligence. And there we go. 107. Likely to be our final level. And also with you. Thanks for everything, Firekeeper. Actually, let's see if she has anything else to say. No. Just the same. Very good. Now, if we're going to fight the final boss, which I'm sure that we are, let's go ahead and switch out our spells. We're probably going to get more utility out of the Great Magic Weapon. Uh, or Frozen. Not sure which. Let's go, let's go Magic, though. And the way to trigger the final confrontation, if I'm not mistaken, is to actually go around and place the ashes upon the throne. So here we have St. Aldrich the Deep. There we go. That's our first one. Next we have Ludlith, who is here who is present, therefore we don't need to worry about him. Here we have Yorm the Giant of the Profaned Capital. After Yorm, the Watchers of the Abyss. After all the backstory that we've gained and everything that we've experienced and everything that we know to be true about the background for some of these individuals, heroes, anti-heroes, or otherwise, it feels like a very solemn moment. And last, and certainly not least, Holy King Lothric, last hope of his line. Well. 
Did I... Interesting. Did I miss something? <laughs> this feels a little anticlimactic. Alright, let's go... Oh, I just had to stand right here. I see. There we go. And with that... Well, the Firekeeper is approaching, so let's go down to confer with her. Acknowledge thee as their true heir, a true lord, fit to link the fire. Ashen one, if kill others. Okay. Farewell, Ashen one. Mayst thou thy peace discover. Let's go before the bonfire one final time. of Cinder. The fire fades. And the lords go without thrones. Surrender your fires to the true heir. Let him grant death to the old gods of Lordran, deliverers of the first flame. Interesting that the fire that I was being baptized with turned to ash as it approached me, which is appropriate given who I am. So we are in the kiln of the first flame. In another Firelink Shrine, which is, I suppose, if not uh, the, the original Firelink Shrine in the future, perhaps an alternate version of it, perhaps. Time and space are very uncertain things. Okay, I think that that bonfire back there was our last opportunity to conclude any unfinished business before we proceeded, but I think we're ready. Travel to the Dreg Heap. Oh, I see. So if we wanted to take care of the DLC, we could do it here. Oh, and we're, we're back in the Dreg Heap. I see. Interesting. So we're basically just seeing this from another side. I, I now understand why uh, some people might do it in an alternate order, but I'm still satisfied with our choice. I think this is, to me, this this feels like a better finish. 
And it can't all be this easy. I'm sure there's somebody who's going to waylay us on our way. Let there be victory and demon ahead. All right, I'm up for a demon. Stole of Cinder. Uh-oh. Got to get some heals in. There we go. Oh wow, that's a that's an extreme delay right there. Uh-oh. Phase 2. Nice. Uh oh. Yikes. Okay. We gotta get in close. Maybe not. That feels like a phase that we just sort of wait out. Ooh, poison. Toxic. Let's stay out of there. Whoa, nice backflip. Very nice. Oh, I love that. I love how he's using all, all the all the different uh, resources that you have at your disposal. Pyromancy, flame, poison. They're all there. Oh, no. Okay, he's got quite a reach. I must say. Oh dear. Okay. Back it up. That stagger is definitely tough. Oh, stagger! Is this a second phase? Me thinks it is. Me thinks it is. Okay. Of course, that's what, what we'd expect. Whoa. Okay, get up. I detect some sad uh, piano notes, reminiscent of our original Dark Souls foe. Oh no. Okay, this is fine. Oh, here we go. And our foe is no more. I think. The Lord of Cinder has been slain. So of course, I'm sure that must have been Gwyn. Uh, I'll, I'll have to go back and listen to the soundtrack more closely, but it felt like a more dramatic restyling of the original Gwyn theme from, uh, from Dark Souls. One. Very sad, very tragic. Uh, it felt like he that was his that was his ultimate form. The Gwyn that we f that we faced in Dark Souls One felt a bit a bit sadder. Felt like it was him at the end of his strength. 
right? Him having given up his his flame to relink the fire. Now, we've got link the first flame here as an option. Find work, but be wary of think carefully. I see. So not it not all is as it seems, right? And what do we have here? We've got a summon sign here, even though Oh, summon the firekeeper. Yeah, I suppose I suppose we should discuss things with her. I'm interested to get her perspective. Because I certainly don't want to link the fire, but I think I'm guessing the only way to let the fire finally go out would be through her assistance. And she may be willing to because of the eyes that we gave her, right? I think she's been convinced. First flame quickly fades. Darkness will shortly settle. But one day, tiny flames will dance across the darkness. Like embers linked by Lord's past. Ashen One. Hearest thou my voice still? Huh. Wow. And with that, the fire fades, the world grows still, but perhaps bringing with it an opportunity for renewal and rebirth, whatever that may look like. And with that, the end to the Dark Souls experience. Wow. So, I'll, I'll limit my thoughts more specifically to Dark Souls 3. I plan to do like a separate video or, or something with kind of my thoughts on the overall franchise. But for Dark Souls 3 specifically, one of the things that I always notice first and foremost in um, a game with a lot of heart like this is is the music I think that's kind of that's kind of no surprise to anyone but but to me a lot of people love Dark Souls for the the fighting for the artistic design for the story and those are absolutely all wonderful aspects of the game but to me I can't help but feel like the music is kind of the beating heart of the experience. It helps you feel the connection and feel the seriousness of uh, what you're being confronted with here, you know, in, in something that has implications for the fate of the universe and also kind of implications for yourself as a person, as a player, I would say. You know, the idea of... it being able to find purpose in a world that is unfriendly, finding value and connection, 
And we, when we see that in the people that we meet along the way, whether it's the Firekeeper or Ziegverd or the Blacksmith and so on and so forth, that sentiment, I think, is really captured well in the music of Dark Souls. And to me, I think Dark Souls, Dark Souls 3 uh, is a triumph of musical storytelling, uh, which I think is absolutely amazing. I think boss-wise, if I had to think of um, what stood out most to me in this experience, I would say really all the Lord of Cinder fights uh, really stood up uh, to, to my expectations. The only one that was a little bit unusual, I wouldn't say it's bad, I just wasn't expecting, was Yorm, uh, because uh, Ziegverd was there to fulfill his end of the quest. I suspect, though, if we had not been as um, attentive to Ziegverd, we might have, might have had to attend to uh, Yorm on our own. That might have gone very differently, but... I would say if I had to pick a, a top few most memorable for me, uh, the Nameless King, of course, was extremely challenging, but I think was an, an excellent cap to a very um, make or break type of area. It's, hey, you've leveled up your main stat as much as possible, so here's where you really put the money where your mouth is and see how you can perform so everything leading up to that was very challenging and then of course he himself very um, very tragic and also extremely challenging as well he's he's quite memorable to me uh, I would say the twin princess for some reason just sort of their reluctance to be involved in the matters of the world but and yet their dedication to each other in spite of it all with no real ambitions to do anything beyond the castle. That, to me, felt very memorable. Even if I wouldn't necessarily call it the best or most challenging encounter, for some reason that that stuck with me um, longer than just about any of the, any of the other um, bosses that we faced as well. Um, what else? I think the whole experiences with... The demons also w was very tragic in a way. I don't know. It's it's one of those things. I think Dark Souls has a great way of making you feel multiple, almost conflicting emotions simultaneously. For example, with the the old demon king, the fact that he's the last of his kind, right? The the last of a dying uh, species feels very tragic, and the fact that you're the one to just go in there and snuff it out. But of course, that's juxtaposed with the fact that I'm sure demons are responsible for a great deal of tragedy and darkness and suffering in the world, so should you really feel bad about that? And then again, is that something that I'm just justifying to myself to <laughs> take this power, which I really desire? Um, I don't know. The fact that it gets you asking questions, I think, isn't itself itself is a, is a great triumph uh, and is very important as well. As far as how I feel about the, uh, the my personal leveling, so of course we went hard into decks, dipped into intel into um, intelligence there at the end. I think I think I'm very happy with how that went. Obviously, the the intelligence sorcery aspect didn't get utilized a ton, but that's just kind of the name of the game when you're going decks heavy. In my opinion, is that something will have to get the short end of the stick and if I were to do a new game plus I for sure would want to continue to level that up and you know experiment a bit more with sorceries I feel pretty satisfied with my performance in terms of learning to deal with bosses as a as a function of timing and challenge and uh and dodging and rhythm I feel like uh I've I, I feel good about how all that went so Having to deal with them in sort of a, a ranged format with being uh, more dependent on spells, I think would be a very interesting, different challenge that uh, I'd enjoy undertaking. Um, what about areas? What areas were most interesting to me? I don't know. For me, I, I always really like the castle episodes because it feels like a like a dungeon and seeing all the the great finery of the royalty just sort of abandoned and left in disarray, but with still with a quiet 
uh, aristocracy about it, I think is very fun to just run through and, and fight the various silver and black guards. And I have to say the Grand Archives also were very memorable as well. Begin journey two in current state. Journey two can be initiated from the Shran. Fine. No, let's let's not begin that uh, at the moment. Just uh, I I don't usually start new game plus right away just because I want to um, figure out what I want to do. So I assume this is we've we've traveled back in time briefly before the final encounter, of course. But uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, again, I'm gonna publish something. I don't know how soon. I want to do a good job on it, so it may take me a little while to publish kind of a, a wrap-up video with my thoughts on the Dark Souls saga as a trilogy and kind of favorite and least favorite bosses, uh, memorable areas, quest lines, weapons, uh, frustrations, all of that. If there's anything in particular that you'd be interested in hearing discussed, uh, please uh be sure to let me know and, and I'll um, put those in the video and see uh, what sort of topics people might be interested to hear about or to, to share their perspective on as well. As always, for everybody who's been uh, you know commenting and liking, offering helpful tips that were just enough to point me in the right direction without giving away the game, I really, really, truly appreciate it. And, and for those, of course, who have been uh, with me all along the way from the very first Dark Souls, uh, a double, triple uh, thank you is absolutely due to you as well. I mean, Dark Souls as a game fundamentally is one that is that shines in community. And so having your community uh, with me along the way, in addition to, to the messages and such here in game, really kind of made it a very special time for me. And, and I can't thank you enough um, for that. What's happening next? Um, not sure yet. Elden Ring will come at some point. Obviously, the DLC, as of the time of recording, will be coming out later in June of this year. Uh, we'll take a little bit of a break from uh, the From Software genre for a bit, but we will be back bigger and better than ever, ready ready to tackle <laughs> tackle a game uh, three times as long, if not more, than what we've experienced here. But one obviously that I'm very excited to share with you all as well. Please let me know your thoughts as well just on Dark Souls 3 specifically, what your your best, least favorite parts were, uh, and anything that you would like to share about your journey. I'm very interested to hear. So with that, friends, one more time, thank you so much for everything. And uh, with memories of Lordran, Drangleic, and Lothric, Dear in our hearts, I bid you adieu one final time. Bye for now.